Hi everybody, Jacob Breed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model, and equilibrium, as well as changes in equilibrium for the aggregate economy. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. So while you should have already learned a little bit about the aggregate supply and aggregate demand curves, we're going to review the graph quickly. First, we have our axes. Over there, we have the price level. This is the price level as measured by the CPI or the Consumer Price Index or the GDP deflator. This is average prices within the entire economy. Over on the x-axis, we have real GDP. That is GDP that has been adjusted for inflation. Real GDP is also known as national income. That is abbreviated as Y. It's also real output and employment, which is the opposite of unemployment. And that means as real GDP increases, employment goes up, unemployment goes down. One of the curves we have in this model is the aggregate demand curve. It is downward sloping, just like regular old demand curves. There's an inverse relationship between the price level and real GDP. That aggregate demand curve represents all spending within the economy. We also have an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve that shows the direct relationship between real GDP and the price level. And the reason for that upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve is because wages and other resource prices are sticky or inflexible in the short run. That short run aggregate supply curve represents all production within the economy. Now, because wages are flexible in the long run, we have a vertical long run aggregate supply curve. The long run aggregate supply curve shows us that at any price level, we will have the maximum sustainable level of output. We label that maximum level of output YF, and that's because that is the national income that is equal to the level of output when the economy is at full employment. That means there's only frictional and structural unemployment. Next, we're going to talk about short run equilibrium. And just like you saw with the supply and demand graph for individual products, the aggregate economy is also going to seek the equilibrium price and quantity. Here though, we call the price, the price level, and the equilibrium quantity is the real output. And that's labeled Y1 here. And so that equilibrium is found at the intersection between the short run aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve. And wherever our equilibrium is, just multiply the real GDP by the price level, and that will give you the nominal GDP. If we add in a long run aggregate supply curve, we can see where the economy is today compared to where it will be in the long run. We call this scenario here an inflationary gap. The current output, labeled Y1 here, is greater than our long run potential output at YF. The economy is currently producing more than it can in the long run. On your exam, you may see this described as the economy operating above full employment. In this scenario, unemployment is lower than the natural rate of unemployment, and that's because we are producing more than the long run potential output. If you draw in the long run aggregate supply curve on the other side of the short run equilibrium, then we are going to have a recessionary gap. There, the current output labeled Y1 is less than the full employment output. Here, the economy is operating below full employment. Our national income is lower than the long run potential, and our unemployment is higher than the natural rate. When the economy is said to be at long run equilibrium, the long run aggregate supply curve will pass through the intersection between the short run aggregate supply curve and the aggregate demand curve. There, the long run potential output is going to equal the current equilibrium output. And that's labeled both Y1 and YF here. When we are at long run equilibrium, the current rate of unemployment equals the natural rate of unemployment. Cyclical unemployment is zero. Little side note, this is called long run equilibrium, but it can exist in the short run or the long run. And in a future video, we will see how we get to this long run equilibrium from a recessionary gap or an inflationary gap when there's no government intervention. Next, we're going to talk about changes within the ASAD model. And first, we're going to focus on aggregate demand shocks. Those are dramatic changes in the aggregate demand curve. And while you may have already learned these, these are our aggregate demand shifters. First, we have our formula for GDP, that's consumer spending. IG, that's gross investment or business spending. G is government purchases. And XN is net exports. 
If any of those things increase, the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right. If any of those decrease, the aggregate demand curve shifts to the left. Consumer sentiment as far as guesses about how the future economy is going to be will also impact that aggregate demand curve. When consumers feel more confident about the economy, it's going to shift that aggregate demand curve to the right. Increases in taxes are going to shift the aggregate demand curve to the left as consumers have less disposable income. And increases in interest rates are going to decrease gross investment and interest rate sensitive consumption. We also have business sentiment. That's how businesses are feeling about the economy. If they're feeling good about it, then they are going to invest more and that shifts the aggregate demand curve to the right. And all of those things will shift our aggregate demand curve. If we have an increase in aggregate demand, we call that a positive AD shock. That is going to shift our aggregate demand curve to the right and that results in a higher real output. Real output is of course real GDP, national income, and employment all increasing because of that aggregate demand curve shift to the right. And because of that aggregate demand curve shifting to the right, the price level is going to increase and that means more inflation. And we call this type of inflation demand pull inflation because that demand curve shifting to the right pulled the price level upward. If we have a negative aggregate demand shock, that means the aggregate demand curve has shifted to the left. That is going to decrease our real output national income and employment, increase unemployment, and we are going to see our price level fall. That means inflation has decreased. Next, we're going to talk about some of the short run aggregate supply shifters. We have input prices. When input prices or resource prices increase, shift to the left. And when production costs increase, we will also see a leftward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve. If we see an increase in resource productivity, that is going to shift the short run aggregate supply curve to the right. And if we see an increase in business taxes, that's going to shift the short run aggregate supply curve to the left. And likewise, the increases in business regulations will also shift the short run aggregate supply curve to the left. The final short run aggregate supply curve shifter is inflation expectations. And that's because as people expect more inflation, they are going to demand higher wages and that's going to result in higher input prices, shifting the short run aggregate supply curve to the left. A positive short run aggregate supply curve shock is going to shift that supply curve to the right causing our real output to increase. That's real GDP, national income, and employment all increasing. But with a rightward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve, we will actually see a lower price level. If on the other hand, we have a leftward shift of the short run aggregate supply curve, that is going to result in a lower real GDP, national income, and employment. But here, we actually see the price level increase, which means we have higher inflation. This type of inflation is called cost push inflation, also known as stagflation. It is often caused by a dramatic increase in the price of resources like oil or gasoline. And the reason it's called stagflation is because we now have a stagnant economy. The unemployment rate is going to be greater than the natural rate of unemployment because we are producing less than our full employment output. And while having that stagnant economy, we have higher prices, which means we have inflation. So both cost push inflation and stagflation are caused by leftward shifts of the short run aggregate supply curve. Next, we're going to talk about double shifts within the ASAD model. And we saw this in regards to supply and demand markets as well. If we see an increase of both short run aggregate supply and aggregate demand, we're going to start off at this first equilibrium point where our price level is P1 and our output is YF. The increase in the short run aggregate supply curve is going to put us at that equilibrium point labeled two. Our real output is now increased to Y2 and our price level has decreased to PL2. When we add in the aggregate demand curve shift, we are now at 0.3 for our equilibrium and now the price level has risen up to PL3. The output on the other hand has increased again to Y3. And you'll notice that both of these shifts increased the real output. But in regards to the price level, the first shift decreased it and the second shift increased it. As a result, we know for sure that the real output is going to increase, but the price level is now indeterminate because one shift made it go up, the other shift made it go down, and it really depends as to how big those shifts are as to where the final price level ends up. If on the other hand, we saw an increase in the short run aggregate supply curve, but a decrease in the aggregate demand curve, the short run aggregate supply curve shift is still going to increase output and decrease the price level, but the decrease in the aggregate demand is going to put our price level 
all the way down to PL3 and our real output will now be at Y3. This time, both shifts actually decreased our price level. But for the real output, the first shift increased it and the second shift decreased it. As a result, that price level is now for sure going to decrease, but it is that real output that is now indeterminate. And when it comes to solving these double shift issues, just graph it out, see what happens. One axis will be indeterminate. That's because one shift will increase it, the other will decrease it, but the other axis will be determined because both shifts will push that axis in the same direction. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about manipulating the ASAD model. If you wanna practice manipulating this graph, head over to reviewecon.com and play the ASAD model game. And if you still need more help after that, Make sure you pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.